privilege to spend this time with you. I want to welcome all the viewers onto this platform. And uh, my name is Pastor Maddie Livesey, and I'm from International Living Faith Dream Center. And I'm sharing this platform with Dr. Francois Engelbrecht today. And I want to thank him for the opportunity to be able to minister the Word of God to you in your home or wherever it is that you are watching this broadcast from. And I hope that your life will be impacted by the Word of God today. And so if you have your Bible, your notebook and your pen ready, I want you to turn with me to the book of Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11. And Jeremiah chapter 9, 29 verse 11 says, For I know the thoughts that I have toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. I want you to underline the part that says future and a hope. And then go with me to another passage of scripture in Romans chapter 8 verse 37. It says, Yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. I want you to underline conquerors in that passage of scripture. And then the last passage of scripture I want to take you to is Revelation chapter 2 verse 7. It says, He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to the church. Who is the church? The church is you and I. And uh, in that passage of scripture, I want you to underline the word hear. Let him hear. And so I want to just elaborate a little bit on these three scriptures as I want to bring them together as I want to minister a word of hope to you today that God wants you to conquer and God wants you to become unstuck in the area of your life that you feel stuck right now. And so Jeremiah chapter 29, 11 in the message translation says it's so beautiful. It says, now I know what I'm doing, says the Lord. I have it all planned out. Plans to take care of you, not to abandon you. Plans to give you a future and a hope. Now the future and the hope that it's speaking about in that passage of scripture is speaking about you and I not just dreaming or thinking about our future or thinking about that the fact that we have a hope, but that it's time for us to begin to live the dream walk in the dream, walk in the future, and the hope that God has planned for us. And so it's time to look beyond the obvious of what is going on around me in the natural and to be stuck in the conditions and situations in my environment. But it's time for me to walk in the future and the hope that God is promising me to walk in my dream, to live the dream that God has set out for my life. And so Romans 8 verse 27 says that yet in all these things. Now, the couple of verses before verse 37 in Romans 8, I want to just give you a little bit of background. Uh, it speaks of if God is then for us, who can be against us? He says the God who gave his own son up for all of us, how will he not also give us all things? And who is to condemn then? Is it not Christ who died and rose from the dead, having settled the debt for us? So surely then the one who paid the price uh, uh, is the one that should judge. And with all of this in mind, he says, who can then separate us from this kind of love that God has for us? Shall tribulation, distress, pers uh, persecution, famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword be able to separate us from this kind of love? No, he says in Romans 8, 37, yet in all these things, despite of what's going on around me, he says, in all these things, we are still more than conquerors through him who loved us. Revelations 2 verse 7 speaks about let him who has an ear hear. And this hearing is very important because this part of hearing has to do with us receiving the future and the hope that God promises us. So how do I conquer, pastor? Well, in this life, 
with, with so much condemnation, tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, danger, and even living in a society that's so judgmental. How do I conquer? Well, that's what I want to help you with because I believe that God wants to unstuck you from the place you're in so that you can begin to move in the power of a conqueror because that is why he died on the cross for you. And this is where the future and the hope comes in. There is power in the revelation. This part that he speaks about in Revelations 2 verse 7 that he says, he who has an ear, let him hear. The hearing power, uh, the hearing part has to do with being able to receive the power of revelation in your life. The power of revelation brings to your life the future and the hope. See, knowledge and information is important, but without revelation, the wisdom to apply this knowledge and information, there is no power. Revelation brings power in my life so that I can conquer. So how do I conquer? By hearing. If you're taking notes, write it down. We conquer by hearing what God is saying to his church, to his people. How do I receive revelation? By hearing. How do I hear it? Well, I have to become receptive and open to understanding the character and the nature of God. I have to allow the word of God to reveal the true Christ to me. His true character, his true nature. There must be a desire in my life. Come on, it's not just going to happen. It's not just going to come to you. The Bible says, actually, if you knock, the door will be opened. If you ask, you will receive. If you seek, you will find. And so this type of revelation of hearing what the Lord is speaking to our lives has to do with me having a desire to get to know the Lord. Psalms 23, my shepherd. And so the desire has to be there. And in my desire to know him, he will find me. And when he finds me, come on, he will begin to speak revelation, the future and the hope into my life. And so someone once said that eyes that look are common, but eyes that see are rare. I'm going to say it again. Eyes that look are common, but eyes that see are rare. We need people in this season that can see the future and the hope that God has promised us. And so uh, we need revelation that is birthed out of a relationship with God. As a prophetic people, we are carriers of the future. Come on, yes, and that includes you. You carry within you a future and a hope. And so uh, uh, carrying that future and hope is not enough. You see, we have to walk in that prophetic revelation. We have to begin to live the dream, walk in the dream, begin to walk into that assignment that God has called you to step into. Now, what comes with revelation? First of all, the presence of God comes with revelation. God is not a God that wants to be absent in your life. He's not an absent father. He wants to be a present father in your life. Psalms 46 verse 1 to 7 says it so beautifully. It says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. He wants, he, he's present right now in your life. Therefore, we will not fear even though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, Though, though its waters roar and be troubled, come on, though there's tribulation and though there's shakings going on around us, though the mountains shake with its swelling, think about this, he says in verse 4, there is a river whose streams shall make glad, come on, the city of God. You see, there's a city of God, there's a kingdom that wants to come into your life in this day to reveal to you the future and the hope that God has for your life. You see, there's a river. He says, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. Verse 5, God is in the midst of her. God is present right now. This, this scripture is applicable to us today. God is in your midst right now. She shall not be moved. See, when God is present in your life, nothing can move you. He says, God shall help her just as the break of dawn. The nations, come on, raged. The kingdoms were moved. 
He uttered his voice. The earth melted. God spoke. He, 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 he released prophetic revelation. He began to release the future and the hope. And what does it say? The earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The Lord of hosts is with you. The God of Jacob is your refuge. He is with you. God wants to be with you. And not only does he want to be present, he, he doesn't only want to be a present help in time of need, but God wants you to conquer in this life. Because you see, when the presence of God comes into my life, I receive the power. God's presence is the power for me to conquer. I know you feel trapped. I've trapped. I, I've also felt trapped in my life before. I know you can't see a way out of where you are right now today, but I want you to receive your future and your hope by faith because you see your prophetic destiny and the word that God releases into your life regarding your future and your hope does not match your current condition. God's word for your future and my future and my hope, it doesn't match your current status. But you have, that is why you have to receive it by faith. So how do I overcome? Well, I'm going to start saying this. Overcoming has to do with hearing. You're overcoming in this life. You overcoming where you are right now. Getting unstuck is connected to your ability to hear what God is saying to your life right now. Uh, overcoming everything in life is not the criteria for you to get to heaven. You getting to heaven is only based on one thing and one thing only, and that is the precious blood of Jesus Christ that cleanses us from all unrighteousness. And it is a process. So those of you out there that thought that you had to conquer everything before you can go to church, before you can worship God, before you can partake of His promises, I want to encourage you today. If you have conquered something in your life, you are more than a conqueror. And I want to cheer you along and say continue to run that race because God has a future and a hope for your life. God has a plan to take care of you. It's time to hear what he's saying to you. He's got it all planned out. He has a plan for your life. You are enough. It's time to conquer. Come and eat from the bread of life. You are welcome to enter. Come and receive all that God has for you. Stop being limited by the opinions of man. Begin to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to the church. You. I want to pray with you today, and, I, and Lord, I pray, uh, and if you would join me in this prayer, please come, and then I want to minister a song to you, and just allow the presence of God to begin to fill your home, to begin to fill your life. I want you to experience His presence. I want to announce to you that there is a light, like John in the wilderness, he cried out, prepare ye the way of the Lord. You see, John was the one that testified of the light. I want to testify of the light of God that wants to come into your home right now come into your environment right now as you open your heart to begin to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to you. Lord, I pray that your word will begin to wash us and cleanse us, cleanse our ears to begin to hear what you say, not the opinions of man, not the opinions of our societies and our community, but what you are saying. And Lord, we want to hear from you what you are saying. And I pray, Lord, that your people will begin to partake of the prophetic future and hope that you have for us, Lord. And that by your spirit, your presence will come and empower us to overcome all things, all things, oppression, judgment, whatever it is that we're going through. And Lord, as we overcome that, we will know that we are welcome to partake of the manna, the fresh revelation of God for us for every day and all the glorious things that you have for us. Right now, as the presence of God just fills your life. And I believe God wants to touch you. I want to minister a song to you and just ask you to just join me in this couple of moments as we worship him. <laughs> Father, we pray that you once again come and that you fill our homes with your presence. I pray for a conquering spirit to come upon us in this season. In Jesus' name. Okay. 
coming upon your life. The spirit to conquer and to come out of that place of being captive. God is setting you free this morning. He's feeding you with a manna, with a fresh revelation of his word. That there's a future and there's a hope for you. right now that is removing every burden every yoke from 